Maybe I'm crazy, but Jennifer Aniston is stressing me out. <laughs> it's not okay, Jen. Brad too, but you know, we were, I, I think I was, I don't remember if I was Team Angelina or Team Jen actually, it was so long ago. I was Team Jen. <laughs> Sam, Sam, yeah, Sam, yeah. Sam. But that movie was so good, though. Fire. Well, that movie good. Crazy. That movie is so good. Mr. and Mrs. Smith was good. <laughs> <laughs> no, home records are not cool. Um, but yeah, that was you know. Anyway, so anyway. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm not. Welcome to Maybe I'm Crazy Podcast. <laughs> I'm Joy Taylor. We're gonna have Antonio Cromartie on the show today. Uh, you know he's a seminal, but I'll make an exception because he played with Jason, um, and he has some he has some words for my brother, obviously, because you know uh, apparently he did not give him a gift that he gave the rest of the team. I'll explain later. Um, we're gonna talk Super Bowl. We're gonna talk Aaron Rodgers, prop bets that I like, Conor McGregor, the Titans. Um, again, I can't really remember. I can't read. What did I write there? Mm. Oh, Cincinnati, Joe Burrow. What I'm going to do about that and the culture report and the halftime show for the Super Bowl. But let's get started with Antonio Cromartie. All right, Antonio Cromartie, thank you so much for joining us on the Maybe I'm Crazy podcast. Appreciate you having you, even though you're seminal. It's okay, though. You know. It's all right. Yeah. You're a hurricane. You better be glad I did the show. Well, you know, I'm not definitely a hurricane, <laughs> just a hurricane fan. But yes, we're both down together, as we were discussing before we uh, started recording. As long, you know, we can both just root against the Gators. That's all That's that matters. It. Yeah. That's all that matters. We're on the same page with that. You actually played with my brother, for a year yes in new york which was in my opinion jason's uh best year because you guys went to the afc championship, championship game i'm still mad at him uh oh why would he do he didn't give me no uh, the, the cool gray jays when they all came up but he gave everybody else in the locker room so <gasps> he gave everyone in the locker room except you jays? everybody but did he forget and he told me he was gonna get me too i'm mad at him so just let him X know that jt Jeez. Okay, note has been made. <laughs> um, I will yell at him about that. Um, but I actually, I love that year with you guys. Definitely. It was a fun year. Uh, I got to be a Jets fan, which was new. Um, I enjoyed it because you know, I like being a villain. So that was that was fun for me. Although I did ha I did get followed to my car in Miami. Um, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, fans were very mad at him for leaving. But you also, you guys, that team is a little bit back in the news because, uh, you know, your, your boy Revis mm -hmm. has some things to say about... Richard Sherman. Yes. And I know you talked about this on Undisputed, but maybe you can explain it to us a little bit more because I just felt like it was kind of out of nowhere. But they got beef, I guess. No, the beef has been on since 2012, since Revis, when he, when he tore his ACL and Sherman called him out. Well, he didn't just call him out. He called all the other DBs out. Um, and it just it just went on from there. So, like, we always said that Sherman was a – he's only a zone corner. Only reason he's good as he was is because he had – uh, Cam Chancellor and uh, Earl Thomas around him. Right. And we felt like, you know, like, dude, follow the best receiver. You know, like, why won't you do that? And then, so now, the whole fast forward to now is like, okay, sh Hick on Reeves. Uh, why won't you follow the best guy around? You hiding. I'm just like, then I started thinking about it. I was like, man, at the end of the day, like, this man is still doing what he's supposed to do. He is like, playing great, yes. He's playing great in the scheme that he's in. Like, I can't sit here and get mad at a guy. Like, I, me and Sherman had a conversation. He gave me the whole spill about, look, I respect everybody, but I got to feel like I'm not getting noticed enough because I'm playing in this kind of defense with these type of guys. And now he's in San Fran and he's having more success. I just feel like the whole picture of it is, like, look, the dude is having success in his scheme. He's not asked to be running around, following guys around, traveling to each side. He's been asked to just cover his side of the field, play your zone, and do what you got to do. And he's having success at it. But I've never in my life thought to even compare Revis and Sherman. Like, I mean, to me, they're just both great. And and that's that. Like, I don't like I can't take anything away from what Richard Sherman is doing. Come back from Achilles injury <laughs> and now he's in the Super Bowl. Like, what can you even say? That's And that's my whole thing. Like, I can't I have nothing to say because at the end of the day, like the dude is balling. His ass off. He is, yes. And then that's the only thing that goes for as a defensive back. He's going to be a future Hall of Famer. The same thing with Revis. So, like, you're sitting here arguing with a guy that's going to be in the Hall of Fame with you because you want to be considered the best when actually considered the best. There's a lot that can we can call out that can be considered the best from Charles Wilson, Rod Wilson, Mel Blunt, uh, Mike Haynes, Lester Hayes, Willie Brown, um, Char, I mean, say, uh, Champ Bailey to Ty Law to anybody. You can call out all the DBs that say they're the best, but like, what you what what you arguing for? Why, why are you getting mad because he's calling himself the best? <laughs> I just we can all get along in this regard. I could see if it was like a receiver. 
My point exactly. But it doesn't make to me like you're arguing. I don't know. I just I felt like it just came out. I was like, oh gosh, that's so weird. <laughs> it's so aggressive. And it, came, and it came at a time that he got beat, but then he ended up getting an interception in the end of the game. Right. So uh, okay. Well, what do you think of the 49ers this year? Because I had the Chiefs in the Super Bowl and winning the Super Bowl at the beginning of the year, but I also had the Cowboys on the line. We're not talking about old stuff. Um, okay, but <laughs> I did not see the Niners being this this great. I had I had Chiefs at the beginning of the year. I said there was one player away from making the Super Bowl. I said this in August. Um, and my second one was, honestly, it was Green Bay at the beginning of the season. That was, that was my second one. But as the season went on, and when you watch San Fran the way they play, they depend on their front four. They're not telling Garoppolo to go out there and go win the game. Right. We're going to run, and we're going to do what we got to go to do. Uh, it's like it's more of a game management than him just going out and just throwing for three or four hundred yards. I feel like it's a it has to be a green light when he can throw the ball. And you know when it's, when he's playing when he's playing hot he's playing hot. The running game helps out a lot, but that front four, I can you can win with them any day. They're so physical though. All, like all of the whole team to me is really physical. Like George Kittle is ridiculous. He's like he just carries. Five men down the field. He acts like a, a dad who has like your kids like jumping on him, like gonna take him down. He just I mean, drags I, him down the field. But when you look at this team, this team reminds me of was the 2012 San Fran, how physical they was under Greg Roman, how they ran the ball. But the running scheme is different. The running scheme they have with Kyle Shanahan, it's more it's the zone running team that his dad ran when right. he was in Denver. So it's a one cut, get downhill, don't get touched, and then go from there. So I like the Chiefs in this game, even though I respect the 49ers. They're, they're, they're physical, great run game, like you said. They're, I, you're not going to be able to do what you did last week against the Packers, throwing the ball eight times against the Chiefs. No, if you throw the ball eight times, you're, you're probably going to lose that game, especially playing against a guy. But I, this is the thing that fears that I have fear of. If they can get pressure on, on Patrick Mahomes, that's just what that's gonna change the game. If you make him fumble the ball, you make him throw an interception, that can change the game. The other thing that scares me with San Fran is the secondary. They don't have enough speed in the secondary to cover the the, the slowest guy that's in that group is right. Sammy Watkins. So and he's a four three two, four three one type of guy and they everybody else is flying down here. So it's uh, it's gonna it's gonna be a good game. I think uh, with the addition with Casey adding Terrell Suggs later later on during that year, I think that brought a more physicality to that front seven than they had before. And not only that, but it gives uh, Tyron Matthew a chance to play from Rome to feel free and do what the hell he want to do. So when you can have your best player that's on defense just roam the field and do what he has to do, it makes the game a whole lot easier. He's so fun to watch, isn't he? Definitely. I love playing with that kid when I was in Arizona, too. He's great. Well, so the one thing about you saying getting pressure on Patrick Mahomes that I think you have to pay attention to, at least if we're just going to look at what happened during the regular season, when it comes to the 49ers, mobile quarterbacks gave them problems all season. They mm -hmm. they close, I don't want to say struggle, but had close games with the Seahawks, obviously. Yes. One or two plays goes the other way, and they might not even be here right now. Uh, Arizona gave them yes. trouble with Kyler Murray, and Baltimore beat them. And we know what Lamar Jackson is. Yes. So, Patrick but Mahomes is a mobile quarterback. We can, but Aaron Rodgers can be considered a mobile quarterback when he wanted to. When when he wanted to run early in his career, he was he, okay. But now you think he's but, you think he's a mobile quarterback now? I mean, I don't consider him as a mobile quarterback now. But if you play Aaron Rodgers from, I mean, if Aaron Rodgers really wanted to run and get outside the pocket, he can create the space. That's something that they did very well. They kept him inside the pocket. So when you keep a guy like that that's inside a pocket that can't that cannot extend the plays, it's harder for him to go out and go make plays. And I feel they have that dynamic front four that you look for. That can, you don't have to. You can sit back and pressure. You can do whatever you want to do just with the front four. You can maybe add a linebacker here and there to get the pressure in his face. Then it's like every gap in every window is already closed. You're not gonna be able to have a one-on-one -on -one battle with Bosa. You're not gonna be able to have a one-on-one -on -one battle with. Uh, Armstead or Buckner or D four or or any other guy that's out there uh, on that front on that front four. Do you think the Packers will be back next year? I thought that Aaron Rodgers would be in the MVP conversation this year, but it kind of the, their mm -hmm. their offense sort of went through Aaron Jones. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think that this is the like. Whereas I think this was lightning in a bottle for the Titans. Yes. Uh, no, I, I love Derrick Henry. Super fun to watch. 
well, I ain't going to give you Ryan Tannehill two years in a row. And, <laughs> I can't do it. Like, I've just seen too much of Ryan Tannehill. And he had a great season. I'm happy for him. But I just don't think this is they're, they're going to be that team to me that's in the playoffs this year. There's always a team that doesn't make it next year. You know, it was the Rams this year. To me, that's the Titans. But do you think the Packers will be back here or can make it to another Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers? I believe they can. But I think they need to get more weapons on the outside. On the uh, only weapon he has is Devontae, Devontae Adams. Adams. I mean, you had, uh, what's his, uh, Addison, uh, who was playing well when he first got there as a rookie, but fell off. I don't know who the other guys are. They just seem like they're just no-name guys. But I think he needs at least one or two more weapons on the outside to actually be a guy that can be the Aaron Rodgers that everyone's looking for. So one of the other big stories that's going to start really picking up steam after the Super Bowl is over is what is Tom Brady going to do? Mm-hmm. Now, I think he's going to go to the Chargers. Mm. Slash, I want him to go to the Chargers. Uh, now, in general, I don't really – I'm not going to say I don't care about the Chargers, but I don't really care about the Chargers. But I just think they have some – some interesting pieces. Um, I like Anthony Lynn, and I think he wants to try and go somewhere where he can win now and prove that he was really the one responsible for the dynasty in New England. <laughs> and I don't think Belichick's going to have a problem letting him leave because I think he wants to prove that he was the one responsible. Although they don't have another quarterback, so I don't know what their plan is there unless they believe in – what's his name? Stidham? Stidham. Stidham. Stid- Stidman or whatever his name Stidman, is. Stidman. Yeah. Stidham? Stidman? Stidman. Stidman. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the new bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, what do you think Tom Brady does? I think he leaves. But I'm like this. Everyone wants to talk about, was it Brady, was it Belichick? But Belichick went 11-5. They didn't make the playoffs in 2008. And that and they played that with Matt Castle. Matt Castle won them 11 games. So, I mean, he's won with other quarterbacks. So is it really? But it hasn't won a Super Bowl. No, he hasn't won a Super Bowl. But I'm talking he's about won... Super Bowl. Uh, I can't take away that. Then I think it's both. You gotta put both of them in the, in that boat. And who has who has credit? Um, but they, I think they do want to try to prove they can win without each other. And, I do too. Um, I don't. I see the Chargers, but then I don't. But then I'm just like, what other team would he go to? Like, what's your gut tell you he's gonna do? Like, cause my gut tells me. He's my gut's leave. telling me he's gonna leave and go to the Chargers. <laughs> <laughs> That's my gut feeling. I just feeling. love chaos, and that is going to be You know how much chaos that would cost? Yes, a lot. That's the business we're in. I want to have chaos, and yes. And then Phillip Rivers going to go to New England. No. What? What? No. What? Phillip wants I to think, win. I think Phillip's done. I don't think he's done. What's he going to what, what? Listen. Do you that, think he has, you know, you you think he has much, some left? Do you, do you know how much controversy that would be? Yes, it would be ridiculous. If, oh, that would be you know that's great for football. It's it is great. I but would I don't love think, to see that. But you think Philip Rivers? So, and look, I don't. I feel like I'm banging on Philip Rivers. I actually like Philip Rivers a lot. I just think I don't know if he has anything left, man. I think he does. I think he goes to New England. Well, that would I had not that thought had never crossed my mind because I have retired Philip Rivers. Listen, myself, I'm, if it's a if it's a one year deal, he gets a chance to make the playoffs. I'll take the opportunity because that well, gives no, him from his perspective. Yeah, yeah, from his perspective, that's what that's how I would look at it. I'll go to one of the greatest coaches of all time and go up there and go play one or two years and see if I can win a Super Bowl. Now, there's been Peter King was saying that there's a possibility Andy Dalton goes to. No, I would not take Andy Dalton on any of team. So we're, tired, mean, we're retiring Andy Dalton. Yeah, you sure. need to ret- he needs to retire. <laughs> and that's just being real. I listen, Rooster, Rooster, Redhead, Andy Dalton. I don't. I don't. Going to New England? No. I mean, I. I, I just rather, think that would be amazing because I. I think New England fans will lose their I minds. I rather. I rather play uh, uh, Stidman, the the quarterback, the backup quarterback. Jarrett Stidman. Yeah. Stidman. Stidham. 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 Whatever his name is, I rather play him than Andy Dalton. Well, so obviously the Bengals have the number one overall pick, and they're probably going to take Burrow. We don't know. Fingers crossed. Still. If I'm if I'm there, I'm trading that pick and getting three other picks. So I want them to do that because I want the Dolphins to take <laughs> So I you, I would like for them you got, to. You don't want Fitz Magic? No, listen, I like my, <laughs> I, I like Ryan Fitz, Fitz, Fitzpatrick. I do, but he's not the future. No, he's not. So the only way that that works to me is if they get Tua. Like Tua to me needs to go somewhere where he can sit for a year. Then New England would be the best place for him to go sit. Probably, but he's not gonna make, he ain't gonna make it to New no, England. No, he won't. So he, I don't think he don't make it. He'll make it out of top seven. It just depends on how how he does with the injury. But there's so many pe- there's so many teams that need quarterbacks. There is, but it's you you got you're not gonna sit here and invest a top ten pick Why not? the money like that into a quarterback that may not play the may not play that year. I don't I don't know if you have a choice. I think you gotta take that risk. The draft is a, tra- a crapshoot anyway. It is, and it's all about potential. 
So who do you like better, Burrow or Tua? I actually like Tua. See, I like Burrow. I like, but I liked Burrow before Tua's major injury. Like uh, listen, before all this chaos happened, I still was, was listen, like. I, I'm going off off track record. I can't go off one season. It's not just a season. Yeah. It's the greatest statistical season we have ever seen by a human being playing that position. Well, you got to put well, well, you got to put the 2013 Florida State Seminoles up there too, because that's when they won the it's national title. Hey, I'm just being, I'm just being real. You got to put that team up there with Jameis Winston. I'm not talking about the whole team. Listen, I'm talking James, about Burrow specifically. But you know, but, okay, but you know, Jameis Winston was only like six yards or seven yards behind what Burrow has done his whole in that whole career. So he was don't, first. Don't, don't 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 mess with my Seminoles now. This <laughs> greatest team on greatest team of this decade has been the Florida State Seminoles, and that's hands down. No, I don't care what no, LSU it was, has done. It was LSU. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was LSU. But look, I I I feel you. I feel like the two and Burrow. It's just a it's just a preference. I personally didn't like the injuries, and now yeah. that's another thing. So I just think one of the, uh, availability is a skill Definitely. and it makes me nervous that he already has all of those injuries plus i think burrow just played an incredible season and I, I i like burrow but um so if you would trade to the Bengals, that's good keep saying that because yeah. that's what we, that's, that's, what that's the kind happen. of energy we need to put out there uh, for your dolphins huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well thanks so much for stopping by we appreciate it thank it was you good to see you and i will definitely um let jt know that you are expecting some jays um, yes yes that's and, unfortunate. and tell him he can send me some cigars from a cigar shop too okay yeah that's probably what you'll get we about to turn up in this all right hello what am i winning or quitting today in 2020, mm-hmm. things seem crystal clear to my eyes, Joy. I'm getting dramatic. We're going to elect a president this year, you know what I'm talking about? Like, going. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, Steph Curry is going to return, potentially in March, mm-hmm. bringing order back to the basketball universe. <laughs> and the San Francisco 49ers are going to win the daggone Super Bowl. Quit it or quit it. Sorry to inform you, but I have to quit it. What? Well, I predicted the Chiefs would win the Super Bowl at the beginning of the year, and I am going to have to stick to that because... You're sticking with your gun, so... Well, I mean, also, I, I do think that, though. I also believe that. So I have a lot of respect for the 49ers. I did not okay. think that they were going to be here this year. Obviously, I didn't even have them making the playoffs. Me neither. Uh, I think they are <laughs> one of the more physical teams I can remember watching in recent history. They completely bullied the Packers. I mm-hmm. thought it would be more competitive. Mm-mm. But here's the thing. This is actually a very balanced Super Bowl. So if you remember last year it was like, okay, the Rams, like they're coming in hot, they're young, they're fun. Right. But it was the Patriots. And what would we, what would we say? Rammer time? Ram yeah, it up. Rammer time. Put your Rams up. Put your horns. Rammer time. Rammer time. Uh, if you've been watching the podcast for a while, you know what yeah. we're talking about. If not, you're like, what are these idiots doing? And it's, we appreciate you. It's funnier if you know. <laughs> um, anyway, there was such an imbalance from the coaching perspective from the experience perspective of golf and girly and and a lot of the rams players right it just was really imbalanced like i i felt the rams would win but just based off of talent and clearly they got Hoped. i mean it was look let's be honest last year's super bowl was trash it was not a good super bowl it was boring and there was no point scored i like points the patriots won which was like great cool another super bowl riveting oh, damn it. but when you look at the perspective of things, that makes sense because the Patriots have been there 10,000 times. So I don't feel that way. That's not the case here. First of all, Shanahan's coaching the Super Bowl because he got he, he was a part of the most epic meltdown in Super Bowl history when he was with the Falcons. And Reed is coaching the Super Bowl and lost. So yeah, they're both they're, ba- yeah. mm-hmm. they're both balanced there. Yep. That they have mm-hmm. the experience of going through what a Super Bowl week is, that preparation, and taking you know some notes away from what they did wrong. And Mahomes and Jimmy G, obviously, neither one of them have played in the Super Bowl. And even though Patrick Mahomes is 24 and Jimmy G is 28, Pat has 35 starts to Jimmy G's 28. So everyone's kind of talking about Patrick Mahomes being the younger quarterback. Like, literally, physically, he's younger, but he actually (laughs) has more playing experience by a few games. In NFL years, he's older. Right, than Jimmy G. So they're actually really balanced there, too. 49ers have the 12th youngest team in the league. Chiefs have the 16th youngest team in the league. So they're both relatively young Average age of 25.7, 25.9, so basically around like 26 years old. That's very specific numbers. Um, well, I'm just trying to put in perspective, this is a very balanced Super Bowl. Like, it's, it, I don't feel like I'm going into this with one team having more of an advantage over the other. That's why the line is obviously cl- so close also. And I was kind of surprised that the Chiefs were favored because I feel like the Niners are coming in here 
uh, you know, storming the gates. Right. And they're, you know, they place a physical in the front four, and everyone's always talking about the front mm -hmm. four. And the Chiefs are super dynamic offensively. But the, the one thing that gives me pause about the 49ers is what I said with Antonio Cromartie, which TJ Hushmanzada said on The Herd today to point it out that they have struggled with mobile quarterbacks. And I don't want to say struggle, but like the games against mobile quarterbacks that they've had have been close. They lost right. to Lamar Jackson, but the Seahawks games were both close. Mm -hmm. And Kyler. Kyler Murray. So the first time. there's something. That was the first time. Yeah, well, I mean, there's something to that, Learned though. To like, if we're going to take anything away from the body of work, which in general I don't like to do, to lean on too much because it's the postseason and it's one game and it, anything can happen. But we have two weeks to talk about this game, right. so we're going to dissect yep. everything. Mm -hmm. And if, if I'm, from my perspective, that makes a lot of sense. Now, that said, I'm not looking at anybody that, you know, picks the 49ers in this game as a crazy person. Obviously, the 49ers are playing amazing football, the one thing, though, about the 49ers that also gives me pause, aside from the mobile quarterback, is Jimmy G. And, look, I, I like Jimmy G, okay? Do you like Jimmy G? I like Jimmy G. Do you? I don't love Jimmy G, but I like Jimmy G. But you threw the ball eight times. And, again, do what works. Like, win the game. you got to win this game before you get to the next game. But throwing the ball eight times against the Chiefs, I do not believe is a formula that will lead to success. True, but it, it worked on Sunday. And, if you, I mean, you mentioned earlier Kyle Shanahan and the last Super Bowl he was in, and he kind of forgot to run the ball. What did he do yesterday? He didn't forget. He overcorrected he almost. Over -corrected. He almost overcorrected. And I think... Not only think he overcorrected, he just corrected because in that game it made right. sense and it worked. And now, we have, now we're going to have two game plans worth of passing plays that we can try out. <laughs> Because we have all the throws Jimmy didn't need to make this game ready for the next game. I don't know. I just think um, the Super Bowl that that would never even be asked of Patrick Mahomes. So I, I don't know. I to me, I'm I'm going. Okay. I'm going. The Chiefs win a close game. They it, the the line is one and a half right now on Fox Bet. So Chiefs are favored by one and a half. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the Chiefs in this game, and I'm gonna take the points. I think that the Chiefs just have too many weapons. And I'm I'm just gonna lean on Patrick Mahomes in the spot. Like I don't want to boil it down to quarterbacks, but like I said, they're very evenly ma they're very evenly matched. They have two different, yep. very different styles of play, but they're evenly matched teams. So I'm gonna go with the team that I picked at the beginning of the season, and I'm gonna go with the quarterback that I think is more dynamic, which is Patrick Mahomes. Totally reasonable, but I completely disagree. All right, um, <laughs> just think think about this for one second. The night if Jimmy G wins the Super Bowl, let alone Super Bowl MVP, that is the official. Last nail, final nail in the coffin of the Patriots. Like Vrabel got them right to the edge. They're right at the edge of death. Oh, absolutely. But if Jimmy if Jimmy G wins a title before either Tom or uh Jerry, I mean Tom or <laughs> Bill can Bill, yeah. then Oh no, I absolutely agree with you there. It's it's, it's a it's a great storyline. And again, like I said, I don't think anyone's crazy for picking the 49ers. It's not it's not an extreme situation. It's like, oh my god, like how how could you go with that team? It, it's it's going to be a great game. So it's excited. gonna be a great game. So excited <laughs> on Fox. Yes. All right. Um, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers were eliminated from the playoffs on Sunday, despite A. Rod throwing for 326 yards and two TDs. Rodgers wore his best somber face, but did show some optimism about the future with his new coach. Joy, do you feel? You feel a draft in here? Uh, the Packers window is definitely still open. Win it or quit it. Uh, I, uh, I'm with it. I see you didn't mention the uh, the fumble and the two interceptions on that stat line also. What? Two touchdowns? Yeah. That's he, a Yeah, he made some pretty serious mistakes. They were down to your Niners. I, I believe it's 20 nothing for these. Based on the look on his face, I'll just say that those interceptions were bad routes by the receivers. Of course. Just because Always. Aaron Rodgers isn't ever wrong. Or he doesn't he might lose, mistakes. but he's not wrong. Listen, Rodgers on the floor had a great season, so everyone needs to calm down. Okay, I. Rodgers and his little buddy. Yeah, they they they, they had a good season. They they're in the NFC Championship game. They got stomped in the NFC Championship game. Starched them. They had a mm. pretty decent second half, but not uh. good enough. And uh, listen, I get it. I'm a champion. I'm a winner. If you're not first, you're last. I firmly believe that. But I also want don't want to overreact to what happened here. So. Yes, they did not win a Super Bowl, but they still made the NFC Championship game. Great. They did not have a disaster of a season. Everyone's been talking about the Packers all year, like, oh, they're like frauds or frauds or frauds or frauds. Like, yeah, okay, except for all those teams that you thought were legit are not here. Right. And the Packers are. Yep. And yes, you sometimes you just have to catch breaks. Everyone catches breaks, period. 
They That's won. how it happens. You they don't make it to a championship game without catching some breaks and also staying healthy and all these things. Everyone's talking about like it's the apocalypse. They were they were just in the NFC Championship game. They right. were just chill for a second. This was not a, this was not a bad season for them, especially considering the fact that none of you even take them seriously. Right. So for to, to me, same energy. There's two teams. Right. There's two teams that can make it to the Super Bowl. They weren't one of them. They were one of the four last ones there. So okay. Now that said, I don't feel the same way about the Titans. They would they definitely ne- beat the Titans in a they consolation would the, game. Yes, they would. They would definitely beat the Titans. That. They they need some receivers. And there's about 40 or 50 available in the draft, so get a few. Aaron still has about four or five good years left in him. No, he's not mobile. He's not sweet. Um, he can still make some unreal throws, and they're going to be great. They're going to be fine. They're going to be exactly how they were last year. He's tangy. Yeah. He's spicy. He is, yes. But Here's the thing. Aaron Rodgers is arrogant. And arrogant like people, <laughs> you have to have a taste it's like <laughs> oysters, okay? Yeah, like everyone is true. not into oysters. It's too slimy for some people. They're for slimy. Sure. They have a very unique taste. There's a special way you have to eat them. They're they're very expensive. What if you're rich and better than everyone else? You pretend to like them. Even I love oysters, <laughs> okay? And there's certain parts of the country where that's not the case. Certain parts of the country, oysters are very affordable, and they eat them with every single meal. But uh, you Don't, know, it just depends. It's gotta be close to the coast. I feel like if you're gonna eat oysters. right, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's like. Uh, an expensive place like right. you know there's you yeah. know, Washington I don't know where they get oysters nope. but anyway right. the point is they were 13-3 calm down Aaron Rodgers is like oysters and <laughs> <laughs> and I like it because I yeah. like oysters and I like arrogance Delicious. I like a little bit of spice I like a personality everybody can't be the same and he rubs people the wrong way and when you rub people the wrong way and you lose then people are going to come for you they're really excited yeah, I, I don't think this was a, a, a failure of a season nope. for LaFleur and Rodgers. They will be back next year. Hopefully they make some improvements, give him some more weapons because that's what he needs. And and they'll be fine. I, I firmly believe that they will still win another Super Bowl. Aaron Rodgers will oh, win another Super Bowl. I was about to ask you that. I don't. You don't? No. I do. I think they're I think they're the team that they were this year for three more years. There's and they get so to many things that can happen, game, though. Like, if you, look at the, if you look at the NFC, like – Okay, obviously the Seahawks are going to continue to be great. Okay, because they're going to they're going to ask Russ, yep. Russell Wilson to do everything. Uh, the we'll Saints, I mean, I I don't know how how much longer can they maintain this? Because I think a big part of the reason why they were successful this year was because Drew Brees was out for five weeks and was healthier at the end of the season. Yep. So that's not going to happen again well, next I, year. I mean, why not spell him? Have a have a te- have a Teddy <laughs> Teddy season. I, I don't in the middle. I don't think that's the plan. <laughs> I, I, there's work. obviously going to be a few teams that are more improved from last year, but. Again, Aaron Rodgers, all-time great, first ballot Hall of Famer. I'm going to give him a little bit of credit. And they were just in the NFC Championship game. So uh, pending some massive injury, which obviously is available, but we're just predicting it without injuries, they'll be back. Oysters are delicious. They are. All right, Donnie, what's in high key, low key this week? High key, a lot of people are going to be laying some cash on this game coming up. Low key, the prop bets, that's where the real money's at. Yeah, I agree. Um... Well, you know, unless you're a whale, and then you know, this doesn't apply to you. But for the rest of us, I am going to bet on the game. I'm going to take the Chiefs, but I've checked out some of the prop bets, and some of them are a little interesting. So I've given this some thought. So the team with the first successful field goal is the Niners at minus 105. Hmm. I like that. I'm actually I like the Chiefs getting the first field goal. Yeah, I feel like they're gonna get the like a big play down the field but then end up getting stopped by the stout defense and then but bucker is going to end up kicking some in early well we know jimmy g does not throw the ball Word. so um he, I mean, he doesn't he doesn't those are facts that's a verifiable fact he didn't have to uh, okay that's but he does facts. he also does it <laughs> uh, so okay well i'm gonna go with the niners there will there be a successful two-point conversion it's plus 300 now, I know that's that's like one of those things that doesn't happen in every single game, but I feel like this is going to be a really close game, so I'm going to take that one as well. Now, every, obviously, everyone talks about MVP. Mahomes is the favorite, plus plus 100. Jimmy G is plus 225. Now, I understand I'm picking the Chiefs to win, right? but I don't know. This is like, I might, because <laughs> I, 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 like, I, like, I, I like the numbers on Jimmy G. Okay, so here's another one. Donald Trump's commercial. So Donald Trump has a commercial, and so does uh, Bloomberg, right? So, the com- will Donald Trump's commercial say Super Bowl? It's no plus one fifty. Here's a little fun fact for you: unless Donald Trump has gotten the approval from Fox and the NFL, which is obviously available because mm. you know connections, you can't say Super Bowl if you're not Fox. Wow, did not know so that. So you can't. 
No, like you can talk. Uh, is he following the rules now? Well, I mean, yeah. Like I mean, yeah. but they, but, but remember, the NFL has to approve every commercial. So there is no mm. rogue commercial stuff. Like you're not right. slipping like here, slipping this one anyway, and put Super Bowl in it. Okay. So right. it, it's it's how much you believe, how much power you actually believe he has, because you know on other networks and stuff, like you can't in any advertisement, you can't you have to say the big game. Mm -hmm. Like this is a thing. That's true. We are the only ones allowed to say mm. Super Bowl. So it's something to think of. So I'm gonna take no because I still believe in America. Strong choice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Gatorade color is always fun. I'm gonna take lime. I feel like it's always, it's, it, it, I, don't know, I don't remember what it is, but I, I feel like lime is one of those ones where everyone agrees on. Red is way too, eh. Yeah, it sticks you know? to your clothes. It's I'm like the, ex, like almost like, uh, like syrup. You know, it's syrupy. Mm. Lime is like a good, like thirst quenching. I feel like everyone can agree on lime. I can see like a cool rush, some kind of bluish, bluish purplish thing. Boo? Yeah. yeah. Blue. Yeah, you're leaning blue. I'm gonna go with yellow, but okay, you guys are kind of swaying me on that one. A Rod showing during the halftime show. <laughs> Lock. <laughs> and so, so over 0.5 is plus 3.25. Take that. That's happening. And then DJ Khaled half. I mean, it makes perfect sense, right? Like it, A Rod is a Fox Family guy. Yeah. J Lo's doing the halftime show. They never show J Lo anywhere without A Rod. So that's happening. And then DJ Khaled halftime appearance at plus 135 me and t are going to discuss the halftime show later on dj khaled is one of those uh individuals that will more than likely be participating in the halftime show so i'm going to take dj khaled so you guys okay, so you disagree with me on some of these but i do uh i also feel like pitbull should be in on this I'm somehow sure there's a pitbull line <laughs> right, but like right. yeah pitbull's gonna be in the halftime <laughs> show so For that's sure. just not that's happening i think my favorite of the prop bets that i've read was uh how many times a dog is gonna show up in a commercial yeah so i saw that but i just didn't want to think about how, like that's so, that's so much to break down like how yeah. many commercials are there how many of them would actually even have dogs Could be it's dogs too much in the thinking. background yeah, yeah a lot of layers yeah very layered there's so one of the one of the lines also was our Shaq Kira and J-Lo going to twerk. Hmm. It's a prop bet line on that. But here's the thing. Who's deciding what twerking is? That is true. Okay, because I need to know who is defining this. Because is it like, is it an actual twerk? Is it like a butt cheek jiggle? Yeah, there's it's, a difference. There's a difference. So, so I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip that one for clarification purposes. Not a good place for your money. All right, what's next? High key, Conor McGregor beat that ass. Low key, he's a new man. Yeah, so that, that sucked, right? Like... <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't fun. It's a microwave fight. Yeah, that was like a one of those old school Tyson controversy fights. Like, mm -hmm. okay, did you just did you get paid off there? Like forty seconds. Not that Cowboy Cerrone is like some all time great fighter. He is actually. Uh, he he loses one out of every four fights. Yeah, but he's got the most finishes in the UFC history. He's got the most wins in the UFC's history. He's got the most fights in he the UFC history. He does not have a great record. He fights a lot. Yeah. Okay. So, he's a he's a Nate Diaz type character. If UFC was still a big deal. This would have been a big deal. Uh, I mean, I thought it was a big deal because McGregor was back. But mm -hmm. anyway, he, he didn't make it look like a big deal because Diaz fights don't look like that. Anyway, Conor McGregor's been acting like a total weirdo lately. <laughs> and it appears that he just grew up and got his shit together and didn't. We just, we're just now all finding out. So uh, uh, Conor McGregor's been involved in 10,000 incidents. There's way too many to get into. <laughs> but he, it's, just, it's not even a point in listing them. There's just a lot. And some of them are very serious situations and he gets to the press conference and he's like this night buttoned up man and he's like calling everyone brother and like who is this part who's this pod person and deliver us mcgregor but basically he's a nice guy now so full baby face turn he has a daughter now um daughters tend to change people um he got himself tony robbins and still got the mcgregor walk that's all we need here okay let me just no we need more <laughs> he also he also is now investing in his workouts because he said LeBron he's found out that LeBron invests like 1.5 million on his body every single year which we've all known Connor for a very long time but he just found this out and Tony Robbins told him yeah probably yeah. so yeah so he's working with Tony Robbins he's he's investing in his body now he said he would spend money on his camps but other than that he would spend no money on his body he would just go buy watches and cars and dumb shit. And he said that that's stupid because if you invest in your body, then you will perform better and then you'll get more money. So that makes more sense. It's just like, duh, no one bothered to tell you that. He also said he was drinking during the Habib camp, mm -hmm. which would explain why, you know, maybe things Those went things as badly <laughs> yeah. as it did. So he's a, he, he's a new person now and he's taking care of his body and 
He's taking care of his family and you know, he loves his kids and he's just going to be, he said he, he said he's just, he's just grown now. So we're not going to get the McGregor of old, which means we're not going to get the showmanship of old because uh, look, like once you make that turn, you don't get to then like talk all the shit you used to talk. Cause it just doesn't match. Like you got to keep it real and look, whatever. I guess I'm happy for him. He's got his life together, like great for his family and whatever, but it's just, it's not going to be the same. And part of, part of the fight game is having that edge to you. And I mean, you're walking around with Tony Robbins, like oh, some square bear stuff, like no offense, but <laughs> like keep that to yourself. No, I feel like that's the difference. Tony Robbins laid his banana hands on him and he has been shallow held. He's Conor shallow McGregor held? is like seeing everybody for them true selves. So now we have to like, man. we gotta, we gotta, what's homeboy's name that takes the, the spell off of him? I don't remember. But <laughs> anyway, he's gotta, we gotta, we gotta fix him. Yes, thank mm. you. Um, anyway, so if Habib beats Ferguson when he fights him in April, that's what Dana White is saying. His next fight will be Habib. And if he beats Habib, he then will fight Mayweather likely at the end of this year, end of November, early December. So I, that's the, that is the trajectory, I hope, because I do want to see another Mayweather-McGregor fight because I root for chaos and anarchy, and that's all that was. Although, this time around, it's not going to be the shit show it was before. Because if you remember, because I certainly do, they went on a tour around uh, the world. <laughs> what a tour. To, doing some <laughs> crazy stand-up situation. It, I've, I've, I've never seen anything even remotely close to how chaotic that whole presentation was. It was insanity to me. <laughs> the Mayweathers. <laughs> <laughs> what were they thinking? Like, when everything started to spiral out of control and, like, yeah. the insults got obviously racial. way racial and inappropriate, it was like, yeah, what did you think was going to happen if you put Mayweather and McGregor on a stage for, like, 20 minutes to vamp? Yeah, they're running out of stuff to say. Yeah. With, with, with the microphones. Like, here, talk to each other for 20 minutes. Yeah. Like, no, I'm sorry. Uh, professional comedians work for years to come up with that much right. material. Mm -hmm. But we're just going to let these two go up there and do that, and nothing is going to go wrong. That's not going to happen again, though, because Conor McGregor has, has, he has seen the light. So I don't know what's going to happen, but I do think that that fight will happen um, if only if he can beat Habib, if there is a rematch. Because other than that, I don't think there's enough hype. Loser power rankings. Loser power rankings. These are the losers, the losers of the week. All right. Titans, the window. Is it closed or is it open? Nope. Titans window is closed. Sorry, <laughs> Titans fans. That was fun. That was exciting. Uh, nice run, boys. But that's a team that's going to miss the playoffs next year. Um, that was in the playoffs this year. Derrick Henry is a free agent. I do think that they're going to pay Derrick Henry, but they're going to franchise tag or um, give Ryan Tannehill an extension. But either way, he's going to be there next year. And I like Vrabel, but and listen, I, when I say window closed, I'm pretty much just talking about this current setup of the Titans. Like I think Vrabel is a good coach. Obviously, Derrick Henry's out of his mind, but they need something else. They need an extra thing. And as much as I respect Ryan Tannehill and what they were able to do this year. That's not that's not it. So yeah, yeah. like you're not just gonna be able to play like solid fundamental football all the way to a Super Bowl, and that's just not the reality anymore. There's too many dynamic players in the league. So no, it was fun. You did make me nervous. You gave me the sweats. All right, but we're over that. We've we've, we've dried off and we have deodorant, so we're good. Um, what's next? Second loser is you, your future as a Bengals fan. I do have a future as a Bengals fan. So the reports are all pointing to Cincinnati is not going to trade out of the number one spot for Burrow. Cincinnati is denied it, obviously, because they want to keep their options open. But it's looking like I have no choice to, but to embrace the Cincinnati Bengals because I'm so far in on this whole Burrow thing. Mm -hmm. So basically, last year, I spent the entire year having to pay attention to the stupid Browns, which I'm not doing this year mm -hmm. under any circumstances, which I'm not going to need to because clearly they're going to be exactly as they were this year. But the Cincinnati Bengals, I am going to have to pay attention to. Now, I will say the Cincinnati Bengals have had moments of interesting. Like, I liked Ocho Cinco in the TJ years. For sure. You know, so, so they, they have a little bit of spice every once in a while they'll throw your way. Mm -hmm. So it's not as bad as having to watch the Browns and root for them. But I, I, I'm, I'm going to hold out 1% hope that they make this trade. If Carolina can figure out a way to get Burrow with Joe Brady, that would be unbelievable also. Still, Miami is my number one choice, clearly. But... I, I think I'm just gonna have to accept that I am gonna have to be wearing, you know, black and orange. Orange and black. Just don't Halloween colors. You know, I'm gonna look like a pumpkin for <laughs> a year. Um, what's next? This drama-free NBA season. Oh, it's a wrap. Boo. It's a wrap for you. <laughs> Drama is on the way. Yes. I can smell it brewing on the pot. <laughs> 
first of all, if you were enjoying this uh, very reasonable season full of very uh, pleasant storylines, calm, understanding narratives, that's over. Kiss all those goodbye because the football season's over now, so all of our attention is headed to the NBA, which means we're going to want to know all the issues, and Houston is lining right on up with a four-game losing streak. <laughs> the Lakers just got whooped by the Celtics, um, and Derrick Rose might get traded. Miami is looking to make some trades. Uh, they want, like, LaMarcus Aldridge. Um, who else was out there for uh, Miami? LaMarcus Aldridge. Uh, crap. I can't remember that the other name is out there. But anyway, it's about to turn up. There's about to be some trades. There's about to be some chaos. Um, LeBron's going to be in the middle of some controversy. Not sure what it is yet, but it's coming. So all, all, this, all this quiet. That was courteous of them. It was. It was very Given nice. Given the NFL, it's time to shine. Yeah. 100 seasons. Congrats. That's over. Yeah. That's over. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's done. Because it's been nice and quiet because the, NBA, the NFL season has been so wild this year. Like, it's been the, – the, the quarterback play has been incredible. Yeah. There's been so many good storylines that, you know, we just haven't really had a lot of time for any NBA drama, which there really actually hasn't been either. Mm -hmm. But that's over. That is done. Full attention. Full drama is on the way. Have you found another name yet? I was just scanning Twitter for myself. Oh, oh okay. Never mind. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, it's about to turn up. All right, time for the cultural report. T, what's the T? What's going on? Nice shirt, by the way. Thank you. Um, so the SAG Awards was on Sunday, mm -hmm. and obviously everybody's talking about it. Not because of who won, but more so because of Brad and Jennifer. Okay, first of all, Brad and Jennifer, we did not deserve this. All right, we've been through a lot <laughs> over you two, just collectively as a society, and we just... We just finally accepted the idea of the two of them not being together. And then you want to go and like do all this hand stuff and like Brad sitting there watching oh, her. I can't believe I'm going to jump in here, but I watched that and I, it drew me in. Right? <laughs> I'm He's too stressed her. out for this right now, yeah. you guys. He, okay? knows, he knows the cameras were there, though. So of like, course he oh! does. He's just going to stand there and I'll lovingly watch her speech. And then she's talking about they grew up together and like they're friends now. We're all just trying to figure out how to deal with our exes in a normal way. And then you throw this at us. We don't deserve this. Okay? Do the sh in private. <laughs> <laughs> but it's honestly, it's, it, my friend sent me a meme the other day. It's like you walk into your therapist, like, I just put a picture of them on the table, like, this is what's bothering. <laughs> like, this is why I have issues right now. It's really a lot, and I don't, I don't know. I just, this is, I don't, I don't know what to make of it. But look, it doesn't matter who you are. You're gonna have an opinion about it because yeah. when that, it was a lot like Usher and Chili. Like when that breakup happens, everyone collectively was like, oh sh. What? And then you had to pick a side immediately. And then it's like, are you team? Are you team Jen? Are you team a team Angelina? Like, we're we're, we're allowed to be team Angelina. Right. <laughs> in this situation. Yeah. Like, I didn't know that was available to anyone. So yeah, this is stressful. Yeah, I think they set that up too because um, Brad had just won. And then it's like, and he was already backstage, and then she ended up winning. Right. And so obviously they're friends. So I mean, of course he's gonna watch her. What else is he supposed to do if he's right there? I mean, keep so, it pushing. Tell her congratulations later. He want that old thing back. You saw how he was. Oh, how he was I know. <laughs> I know he does. He has a little oh, thing. Right. He, he like has. he literally had her hand. She's walking away, <laughs> and he's like, oh, it was too much. Yeah, it was it was a lot. Oh, it's so dramatic. So are we here for Brenna for 2020 or no? I mean, do we have a choice? I, look, I hope not. And Jennifer is Jennifer is like trending up these days. She like, is. She's on Instagram now. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't be here for it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot to deal with. I don't know. Emotionally, I think we'll all get through it together, but yeah. it's been a lot to deal with over the past couple of days. <laughs> um, what's next? All right. So next, um, Bad Boys for Life came out. I haven't and seen it yet. Okay. Well, well, give us your review. So, yeah, no spoilers, but the movie was really, really good. I mean, I think I was telling you that um, the first one was really good. The second one was, eh, but to me, the third one's by far the best one. Third was the best the, one. The third, one's, the third one's the best one to me only because it's just so different from the first two. I mean, with the pl it, the plot was different. The plot twist, the villains. Oh, well, that's like, good. Like, everything. Like, I was it thinking was, they were going to carry a lot of things over, like... I mean, they didn't really carry too much over from the first to the second one now, the, I guess. The trailer looked like 2.5. Yeah, it did. <laughs> so it's not. Yeah, I mean, not to, to me, no. I, I thought it was fun. I thought it was funny. I just, I loved it. I okay, was, I can't wait to see it. And usually, and usually, like, the first one's, like, really good, and it's, like, after that, it goes downhill. But right. I was actually surprised, and I also saw that Michael Bay didn't direct this one. So... I mean, I loved, the, I liked the second one as much as the first one. Really? Maybe more. Yeah, well, I mean, because it's just Miami. Like, they always have all these great Bang times. Yeah. Mar 
Feng Shui. And then, and, you know, Marino's in it. Like, there's yeah. just like, so many, like, I, I like the second one too. So, okay, so I'm really excited. And I saw it made, I think, 100 million already. So, oh, yeah, for yeah, sure. It's killing it's, the box. It's office. actually, um, I saw this morning that it's number one, this is the number one movie in the world. So, I mean, I guess, you know, Will Smith's not that. washed up yet. No. No. There, no Will Smith slander will be tolerated. No, never. Martin Lawrence <laughs> texts him, thank you, every morning. <laughs> I mean, Martin is, is a huge part he of is. that he is. franchise, though, because he's, he, he balances Will out in those movies. For sure. So, okay, I'm together. excited. All right, what's next? All right, so um, Super Bowl halftime shows. Uh, well, let's start with Demi Lovato. She'll be singing the national anthem. Yes. And then we have J-Lo and Shakira that will be performing for halftime. A lot of girl power. Yeah, so they're going very obviously, um, you know, Latina yeah. for the halftime show, which if you know anything about Miami, there is a big Hispanic market in Miami. Um, and Demi Lovato is an incredible voice. She has yes, an, she a, does. an incredible voice. So that's a good choice for the national anthem. I don't know how long. I, tried, I stayed away from that prop bet, too. Because people get really technical with that. But um, I'm excited about that. She's going to kill it, I'm sure. Now, J-Lo and Shakira, this is where it's going to get interesting. So everyone is – neither of them are from Miami, obviously. Right. So – Last year, it was in Atlanta. We expected a full-on Atlanta halftime show. We did not get that. <laughs> not even close. So, now listen. I appreciated the cameos, but I needed more. And I do think that because J-Lo does spend a lot of time in Miami, A-Rod is a Miami guy, they're going to have some Miami artists play a bigger role in this show. So Pitbull is definitely out there. There's no way this show is going down without Pitbull. That's a lock. I don't have any information on this, but I'm just going to say it. That's not going to happen without Pitbull. DJ Khaled, I think, is also going to make a, a quicker appearance. Pitbull will have a bigger role in the halftime show. Now, if we're going to get into some of the next level Miami artists, I'm pretty sure Uncle Luke is not going to be out there. He was not happy with J-Lo and Shakira being picked for the halftime show at all. So he's already wrote an article, like I think in the Herald or something, about how he's not participating. So we're not going to see any Uncle Luke, unfortunately, because so having a two live crew appearance there would have been incredible. Not going to happen. So as far as any other artists go, maybe Trina. We'll hmm. see. I'm not sure. I don't think Trick Daddy, he's been in trouble with the law recently, so I don't think the Trick, unfortunately, is going to show up. How's, what's Mark Anthony's relationship with J-Lo these okay, days? Okay, so Mark Anthony is interesting, because Mark Anthony, much like Jennifer and uh, still Brad, are still friends, but mm -hmm. they have children together. So it's that could, be, that, that could be an interesting twist, too. I saw a prop at line for Mark Anthony as well. Keep an eye out for Mark Anthony, but I think that they're going to keep the, they're, they're going to limit. I think it's going to be very girl power. Yeah, I think they're sure. going to limit the male appearances and male energy, which I always appreciate. No offense, guys, but ugh, you guys are a lot. So um, any <laughs> opportunity <laughs> opportunity that we have to like you know let's like not do that, we'll probably stick with that. But I do think the pit bull, uh, out of respect, is going to be there and DJ Khaled as well. But I'm very excited for this halftime show. I, I, got, too. One, I got one more. Keeping it in the culture report, Will Smith. Going to Miami, bienvenido a Miami, Ooh, party in the sun, the heat is that. on all night on the beach of the break of dawn, maybe? It's possible. <laughs> it's possible. I hadn't thought of that. But again, I think it's too many men. Yeah. Many men. And <laughs> we're not yeah. into that. So right. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we're I just, we're just wishing Bowl. for a good halftime no, show. I just think it's going to be a lot of, I think it's gonna be a lot of pink power, and I'm, I'm, I'm here for that. I am too. You guys can't have it all. No, so. you can't. <laughs> and, it's, it, and as far as the twerking goes, Here's the thing. Twerk for all right, listen. Twerking is something that is is very culture specific. So it's not a bad thing if it's not your culture. So I don't know how else to like more gently explain that, but they're not gonna be offending me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if there's some twerking action, okay? Um, I don't want to hear about the children. All right, raise your own kids. But I, I am anticipating a lot of ass in this halftime show. I mean, you got Shakira who moves like a yeah. snake. I mean, her hips don't lie. <laughs> right, they don't. So, and then, you know, J-Lo is... J-Lo... J-Lo got that ass, so... She does. I, I don't know... Wasn't, wasn't she famous for, like, getting it insured? Wasn't that a thing back in the day? I mean, I would insure it, too. <laughs> right, it's but, nice. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, like, very, it's a big part of, right. you know, life. In our lives. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm assuming there's going to be a lot of ass. I do think they're going to limit the male appearances to two. So I'm guessing it's Khaled and, and Pitbull. 
Hopefully they bring out Trina, maybe City Girls, but Ooh, yes, make we'll the see. stallion. Yeah, make the okay. stallion would be She'll be in town. Yeah. She'll be in town. So look out for that. Cardi will be in town also. So Cardi's a possibility. Although Cardi is very like pro Kaepernick. So she said she's not going to perform. But again, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But any of those names that we put out there, but I'm guessing they're going to keep it mostly women. Thanks for joining us today on the Maybe I'm Crazy podcast. You can follow us on all our social media pages at Maybe I'm Crazy pod on Twitter, Instagram, or on Facebook. And you can follow on YouTube or listen on the iHeartMedia app, the Apple Podcasts app, Spotify, SoundCloud. We will be at the Super Bowl next week. All of our FS1 shows will be live from Miami, from First Things First, all the way through Lock It In. If you are in Miami, come and check us out. We'll be at Loomis Park. We'll have a huge compound, so you can't miss us. Um, Undisputed will have a audience, so if you want to actually watch the show you can check that out. I'm sure the information is floating around somewhere on their social media pages about how to do that. But you can come by and say hello. We'd love to see you and uh, and hang out. Very excited to be in Miami next week. Not 100% sure if we will have a podcast next week. We'll tweet it out and let you know. But there's going to be some logistical situations there that we have not verified yet. There's a lot going on next week. But either way, I will be all over social media um, letting guys know what's going on from South Beach so hope you have a good week. Thanks for listening. If not, enjoy the Super Bowl. Chiefs uh, minus one and a half. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm not. Oh.